Here I'm going to cover Power Query in Microsoft Excel. I'm going to give you an overview of it, tell you what it is, how to use it, and give you an example from start to finish that shows you how to import data, how to transform it, change it, augment it, and then bring it into the spreadsheet here and update it. As well, I'll be making a premium course out of the Power Query series for Excel, and you will be able to get that from teachexcel.com in not too long. There I'll show you so many other things that I don't have time to show you here. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, so first things first, let's talk about what Power Query is or Power Query Editor. It's a little bit of a confusing topic because it's talked about in a couple different ways and it wasn't introduced into Excel in a very clean way. It wasn't just a clean break from one version to the next version. Here I have Office 365, so Microsoft Excel 365. And this is, if I go to the Data tab, this is where you're going to see all of the stuff that has to do with the Power Query. Now Power Query can be used in Excel from versions 2010 onward. However, in 2010 and 2013 versions, you need to install an add-in from the Microsoft website in order to use it. <laughs> now, if you do that, you will end up seeing a little Power Query tab up here, and that will have all of the options that will allow you to use Power Query. All those options since then have been integrated into the data tab and you can't really see them, which is what makes it confusing, or you, you don't necessarily know that that is linked to the Power Query editor. Okay, so in 2016, also I have to mention this will look a little bit different up here. They have sort of separated the Get and Transform data section from the Queries and Connections section, and then in 2016 version, they have a little Get External Data section over here. My point is, it's going to look a little different, okay? And that can lead to some confusion, but hopefully I can clear it up for you. The Power Query, or the Power Query Editor, or the Query Editor... <laughs> All that is, is it's just sort of an abstraction layer that allows you to perform all of the data manipulation that you would do on the data after you import it into the spreadsheet here. Power Query allows you to do that before it falls into the spreadsheet over here. So it allows you, and it also allows you to save that so you can automate it for the future. So you don't have to use macros now where you might have had to use them in the past. Now let's get started and hopefully it'll be a little bit more clear. All right, so now we're in Office 365, Get and Transform Data. It's very easy to get to the Power Query window. You can go to Get Data and go to Launch Power Query Editor and it's gonna pop up here. Now I haven't imported anything, so it is blank. But the first step is to select what do you want to import. Now if I want to import it from here, I could go up to the right and I could click New Source. And we have File, Database, Other Sources. It's pretty much the same thing as if I had gone over here and clicked Get Data or one of these options in the spreadsheet. But this little window acts kind of like a little mini spreadsheet. So you can go over here, click New Source and get your data. But let's close this and get it the way you will probably get it normally. Just go up here and click From Text CSV. So in this example, I'm going to use a text file. You could also do Get Data. It doesn't matter where your data is coming from. So from File, Text CSV, select the files. We're going to use Country Info in this example, not the revised one. So Country Info, double click that. And you may recognize this from the last tutorial. This allows us to import the data. We could hit load and it would go into the spreadsheet. But here what we want to do is to hit edit. And edit is going to pull the data into our Power Query editor. So this is what that window I just showed you a moment ago looks like when we have selected a file to import. And there's a lot going on here. So let's start with the layout of the window. You have a few tabs. We got file up here. It's a very, very simple one. It's not like the full Microsoft Excel window file button. Then you have the home tab. The trans It's going to have a lot of common steps that I'll talk about in a moment. The transform tab that helps you change your data. Add column tab. This is just if you want to add columns of data. It helps you do that. And the view tab, which has a bunch of 
random little options that you're probably not going to ever use. But one of the most important things is the query settings window over here. Because it has this really cool thing called applied steps. So anything that we do over here now in this little kind of mini spreadsheet is going to be recorded over here in the applied steps window. And it's going to show us all the things that we did to it. And that allows us to track and save all of the changes that we made so that next time when we want to import or refresh the data, the Power Query will just go ahead and run all of those steps that we put over here or that were put over here for us. That way, we don't have to do it by hand in the future. Over here, name is just the name of your query, so change it to whatever you want. You could say country info imports, anything like that. Over here, this bar right here, if we click the arrow at the top, it'll show you all of the queries that you already have. So if you have a bunch of queries, you can see them all here. But now, instead of me going through every little option over here, let's do some stuff. Let's have some fun. So what I did here, instead of importing the revised one, is we have the default CSV file or text file, and it has a bunch of stuff up top that we don't want. As I scroll down, we can see the data starts on line 51. Notice when I click 51 down here, all the columns for this row appear. So it allows me to easily see all of the data inside this row. Here it's just going to be column headers, though. But let's make this guy small. Okay. What I want to do now is it starts at row 51, and I want to remove all of these top rows. So watch two things. Watch over here for applied steps, and then watch this window down here. It's going to change. On the Home tab, I'm going to go to Remove Rows, and I'm going to choose the option Remove Top Rows. Then it's going to ask me how many rows do I want to remove. Well, it starts in row 51, so let's remove the first 50 rows. OK. Check it out. We have this as updated. So row one is now our what will be our headers for each column. And over here in Applied Steps, it went from Source to Changed Type and Removed Top Rows. So if I click Up 1 to Change Type, you'll see what the spreadsheet, what the data looks like without these options down here. So I click Change Type. You can see that. Click up here to Source. It's not going to change that much now. But let's change some more things, and we'll play around with this. So now I want to add a header row. We can go to use first row as headers. If we click the down arrow, you'll see a couple options here. Use headers as first row. Use first row as headers. Choose the default option. And now you can see that ISO and ISO 3 and all of that, they have now become the title for each column, the header. And down here, we have promoted headers and changed type. So if I click up, you'll watch the headers will go away. Well, in a moment, click up one more. Headers have gone. So we can see all of the steps that we went through to get our data to look like this. Now let's do some more cool stuff. Let's say that we want country to all be capitalized. So I'm going to select the country column. Let's go to the Transform tab. This, basically, think of it not always, but oftentimes just as formatting. So you can do a lot more than that, but this is where you're going to apply formatting. So we'll click Format. I want to make it uppercase for country. Country is now uppercase. Let's say I want to remove the FIPS code. Don't need that. It's annoying. So I'm going to click this column and click the little drop-down arrow to the right of it. And you have a bunch of options. Here we have Sort Ascending, Sort Descending, Remove Empty. This is the... The, basically the filter drop-down that you'd get in Microsoft Excel, and it's going to have pretty much all the same stuff there. So that's pretty cool. If you only want to show some items, you can go ahead and do filters there. But if I want to delete it, I can select it, right-click, and I could click Remove. Now the FIPS column has been deleted. Down here in our applied steps, we have Removed Columns as one of the steps. Let's go ahead and remove ISO 3 as well. So I'll click it, hit delete. Now let's say I want to put the country name first. So I'm going to click the country header right here and move it to the left. And then where you see the green bar going up and down, that's where the new column location will be when I let go. There we go. And I'm going to sort this. So A to Z. 
I think that just about covers it for now, but I'll quickly go over some of the other options you have here. You can do transpose, reversing the rows, counting, you can automatically detect the data type, rename. You can do a really cool thing right here where you want to replace values. So you can find a value and replace it with another value. You have lots of really cool options here, and I don't have time to cover them all now. But what I suggest is that you go through and just play around with it. See what it can do for your data. Because essentially, this is saving, it's going to save you a lot of time once you get your query just right so that when it's imported into Excel, it's exactly how you want it already, and you don't have to do anything else with the data. Now let's go to Add Column. Let's do something there. You have a bunch of options here. This one's not used as often as Transform. But let's say that we want to do this kind of a cool column, a conditional column. Think of this like an if statement. So actually, before I click that, let's go over a little bit. Find, here we go, population. OK. Let's go to conditional column. And here, we're going to kind of build an if statement. So new column name, let's call it too many people question mark and so first you can see it's if just like an if statement column name so which column do we want to do something with we're going to do it with a population column this column right back here so if population equals let's choose the operator let's say is greater than let's say 500 one, two, three, one, two, three. So if the population is greater than 500 million, let's output yes for too many people. Otherwise, let's output no. And if you click add rule, you can continue to add rules here. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. This is basically if you were to enter uh, an if statement using an interface like this using a pop-up window, this is how you should do it. It's kind of cool. Let's delete that. All right, so if population is greater than 500 million, output yes, otherwise output no. The new column name will be too many people. Let's hit OK and see what happens. Here is our too many people column. It's at the very end now. I'm going to click it and move it over. Let's get it right next to population. Where are you? So you can see it's kind of like a little baby Excel interface, and it works pretty much the same, and it's pretty cool. And you can see our Applied Steps window continues to grow. So population, too many people, too many people, note, note, note. Let's go ahead and sort by population now, sort by descending. And we have two countries, yes. I'm sure you can guess which ones those are. <laughs> so. Right now, what I did using this interface is I applied a step. I created a new step that will add a new column to the data set, and it's going to calculate a formula for every single row that we're importing, and it'll output a result based on that. And that is pretty darn cool. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the sort here. So let's go. I don't think I need to do that. Nope. Go here, sort by country. Ascending, okay, yes, I need to do it with population. Go here, remove, empty, clear sort. There we go. Okay. Now let's go back to the Home tab. Okay, so I've covered a few things. I showed you how to do some things here on the Home tab, Transform tab, and Add Column tab. Like I said, View tab, you're not going to use so much, at least not right now. So if you want to see something kind of cool, click the Advanced Editor and you will see the kind of Power Query uh, version of a macro. And this is what everything that we did looks like in code. But that is way beyond this tutorial. And it's actually uh, not as fun to use as the regular interface. So here we have it. And let's go through the steps. Kind of fun. This is where we started. And we can go down to see how we made what we did. Change the type. Remove some rows, headers. Change it again, uppercase, killed some columns, changed the order, sorted the rows, added another column, reordered the columns, sorted it again. <laughs> so I can probably get rid of one of these sorts here. 
but that's okay. Once you have the data exactly how you want it to be, everything's good. Have the name how you want it over here because we're going to reference the name in a moment and click close and load. The other option is close and load too. But as long as you have a blank worksheet, don't worry about it. Just hit close and load. Actually, it doesn't matter. It should go on a new worksheet. And Excel is going to do its magic, opens up a new worksheet. Here we have our queries and connections. This is the query that we just built. It imported 252 rows. It formatted all of our data as a data table. So when we click in here, we're going to see two new tabs now. We see the table tools design tab. Standard tab if you turn your data into a table. And now we see the query tab. So this tab doesn't have, it's not very powerful. But what you can do from here is you can easily get back to the Power Query Editor where you can do all of this stuff and much, much more if you just click Edit. And it takes us right back here so we can continue working on it, change it, augment it, do whatever we want to do. Also, if you update your data when you're in this view, go ahead and click Refresh Preview. And it's going to make sure that your data is the most up-to-date data. And you can as well do that when you're down here. All you have to do is click refresh and it's going to make sure you have the most up-to-date data in your worksheet. And that's really all there is to using the Power Query Editor in Excel. It's not all there is, that's how you do it. So that takes you from a, a raw CSV or text file to pulling it into the Power Query Editor to doing all sorts of stuff with it to putting it back into Excel. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of show you how to get from here back to the Power Query Editor and just a little a few little helpful tips in relation to that. So if you go to another worksheet, you'll notice the design and query tab are gone, but you can still get to your connection very easily, queries and connections, even if this window's closed. We just go to the data tab and in at least Excel 365, go to queries and connections. So click whatever looks like queries and connections, and basically it's gonna bring up this window hover over it or hover over it and click edit like this or you can close this guy just right click it and you have a bunch of options here click edit now the benefit the beauty of using the power query editor is that you can keep your data linked to the source data and have it always updated so let's make sure that we can refresh our data. Super simple. Go to the worksheet where you have your data and you can go to the data tab and hit the refresh button to refresh everything or the drop down arrow, arrow and hit refresh just to update this page. So now it makes sure all the data is good. And the cool thing is, let's go to the CSV real quick. Actually, I'll show you if you right click the data, right click. You can also get to refresh and a bunch of other options related to the table, but refresh is very helpful there. So now I want to go to, okay, sample data. Let's open up country info. It's going to open up in Notepad++. Remember, go ahead and download this if you don't have it. It's free and awesome, way better than Notepad. And this is our text file from geonames.org. So you can see all the extra crap up here that we do not want. So every time that we run the query that we just made, it goes ahead and it deletes all this crap up here, puts these guys as the column headers, moves the country name over here to the left, adds a column that that applies a formula, an if statement, and it does all that stuff. And this is our source data. So if we go here now, and let's go ahead and delete this right here. Actually, I'm going to delete CS. Delete CS right here for Serbia and Montenegro. Backspace. Backspace. Save it. Now let's go here, let's find Serbia and Montenegro. Where are you? Right about there. Now let's refresh our query. Bye bye. <laughs> so that's so cool, the data is linked. It did all those steps that we spent all that time doing on the transform tab and the add column tab. It did all that jazz that quickly, updated the data, and uh, made sure that it mirrored our data source. Now, of course, you have to make sure to be very careful that 
if you delete data from your source files, it's going to get mirrored here in Excel. So that's one thing to be very careful about if you have these connections. But if you are aware of that, you know that you're okay with that, and you just want to use Excel to mirror that data, then using the Power Query Editor is amazing. You could, of course, have done all this stuff in Excel previously. This just, you know, saves you a few steps, makes it a little bit easier to visualize. And now, what I don't have to do is I don't have to import all this data on one worksheet, copy it to another worksheet so I have this as a backup, and then do all that jazz there here in the spreadsheet and risk messing things up. I can do it nice, neat, and easy in the Power Query window, no problems. And let's check out our column that we added, by the way, over here. Notice there is no formula. It just imported straight data. So it's not an if statement. Are there too many people? Yes, no. It just imports yes and no. It doesn't do anything with actual formulas within the spreadsheet. So that's one little tiny thing to take note of. In my premium course, I'll make sure to talk a lot more about the Power Query. There will be an entire section just for this where I'm going to show you how to do so many more things over here in our friendly Power Query editor. But for now, I hope you got a good overview of the Power Query editor, and I really suggest that you go out and play with it on your own and get used to using it and see what it can do for you and your data set. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.